I mean, look at adoption, right? Like, so ado- there are lots of adoptees who are like, this is terrible. Like this has been, you know, but it, it is so hard to get full scale adoption data to begin with. Like, so how do you know you're not listening? But adoption to has, I mean, international adoption has effectively ground to a halt. I think that adoption policy has changed a lot. And I mean, the adoption you think it would, the, you think we would roll it back? It's already happened. I mean, you, the amount of babies that were being adopted from Asia in the, in the, yeah. eight, in the nineties, I mean, it, it was everywhere everywhere and now it's you just don't see it at all in the culture war there are no winners just podcasters only a few are willing to risk their lives in the face of some of the dumbest ideas to have ever captured human civilization every week we megan dom and sarah Hader, humbly accept this mission to bring you conversations that are equal parts stunning brave and seasonally appropriate (laughs) welcome to a special place in hell should we keep doing this? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we should sing. <laughs> I'm not going to sing. I can't sing. <laughs> I used to be able to sing. I feel like really? singing is one of those things that's like memorizing stuff. Like you can do it as a kid. I was like not a terrible singer when I was a youngster. Oh. Then I became I, not I don't good know if I all. ever sang. I don't, mm. think, I don't think I was ever. I'm, I'm a little sick. <clears throat> so people are going <clears> to <throat> hear a lot of throat clearing. and. Yeah, well, they'll think <clears> you're a... You're a husky, husky singer with a sexy singer voice. That would anyway. be awesome. I would love to have that kind of voice. Um, That's the kind of voice you can't fake, you know? You, really? You, you either have it or you don't. You mean Elizabeth, Ther- Elizabeth Theranos? Elizabeth uh, Holmes was not pulling She that could off. do deeper, but she wasn't yeah. doing husky. I oh think husky, God. it's like some, it's like a mechanical like issue, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. God, what if we like tried to do the whole podcast in Elizabeth Holmes voice? Just like, this. like, do you think you could do it? I think I could do it. I think I have, I don't already have a little bit of a low voice, right? Yeah. Um, it's really, uh, that's remains one of the most uh, like, impressive things about her. All I feel all women make that voice when they're trying to imitate men. It is like, hey guys, what's oh. up? and then all men have that same weird falsetto. Like, oh, it's so oh, insulting. I'm, I'm a I woman. Know. <laughs> I know the Dylan Mulvaney voice. They all start to sound like Dylan Mulvaney. But we, I mean, we we do that to them. We have this. I'm a guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> they all sound like Gary from The Golden Bachelor, who has been uh, compared to uh, Barney, the the purple dinosaur. Apparently, mm. with the way he speaks. Uh, not that I saw it. I saw about ten minutes of it. I have not seen it, and it sounds awful. It's. I mean. Pretty, I don't know, maybe entertaining. Pretty but. clearly awful. Anyway, um, yes. So, uh, tis the season. We had a, we just had a great hangout with our founding members. Mm-hmm. Um, we met on Zoom with them, which we do periodically, and they're so smart. It was fun. It was really fun. There was a baby there. There was a baby there. there Even baby babies there. are founding members. Yeah, that baby paid cold hard cash <laughs> to be. <laughs> <laughs> that baby earned its out. place yeah. yeah um yeah the we had um what we discussed the uh the rebecca traister episode mm-hmm. um people were very interested in that and at that time our last bonus episode where we talk about the rebecca traister episode hadn't been released so we had this conversation with the founding members privately and then now all sub all subscribers have this bonus episode where we're discussing um you know other issues that we've have um stuff that we didn't get to bring up uh you know why the conversation went the way it did why i wasn't maybe more combative uh so that was that was just released um and i'm just seeing the comments actually on that episode on substack um so it's a yeah, it's interesting. Like the, the comment section, which you get access to if you are a paying subscriber, it's always fascinating. I never know where exactly to answer the 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 questions that sometimes come up, or sometimes I want to respond to somebody. Um, I know. Do they not want us to jump in? I sometimes feel like they should have their space, but I yeah. But then they're like, like this was stupid. This was a stupid thing. Like Sarah said. As usual, being stupid. No. And no, no, they're no. not like that. They're good. They're good. But, uh, you know, I mean, somebody says, like, oh, yeah. here's where I disagree. Then I want to jump back in. Yeah. Um, so there was a little bit of that, a little bit of back and forth. Um, and 
uh, well, there was one question actually by by somebody that I thought was really interesting, and I wonder if we should even have our like a whole episode based on this. But um, Tyler said on transhumanism, he said we've long accepted the implant implantation of mechanical devices to enhance or replace damaged body parts, artificial knees and hips, pacemakers, prosthetic limbs, cochlear implants. I've never heard anyone argue that use of these devices makes us less human. Why is a device designed to assist cognitive function qualitatively different? I think this was, um, I referenced in the bonus episode, something about uh, how I'm concerned about how we're changing ourselves biologically. Um, and that some future device that like enhances memory or something like that, um, which is, which is a goal for a lot of researchers actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, and kind of where people think that this is the first step. This is the first thing that we should be able to, uh, change about ourselves. Um, I think that that's going to make us different. Like it, it is going to make us, it's weird to say less human. I just think it's going to make us differently human, you know, like it, it, it just, it will change us as a species in some, um, significant way it might not be a way that we understand, um, uh, immediately, but it's hard for me to imagine that something like, you know, a wonderful like perfect memory wouldn't change us quite a bit and there's like you know the, every once in a while there'll be a story about somebody who has e- e- either the either no memory <laughs> no ep- personal episodic memory mm-hmm. or like a perfect memory a fantastic memory uh. and you can tell that these people seem to ha- they have a very different lived experience like but they have a very different sense of what it is to be human um and i think that they 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 respond to events differently oh yeah um it means something different to them and i can see why why it would of course right so i know the people who remember every single date and every single moment of time i mean that must just be so strange like they there's not a moment that passes that doesn't get recorded permanently in their memory i can't even imagine i think there's a distinction between um like a personal episodic memory and a memory for like dates and times and like facts about the universe. Yes. I think oh, they're yes. like yeah. different, like different they're, they're held yes. yeah, differently in our brains. And so there are people who have a normal head for facts, you know, geography, how many continents are there? Uh, what's the capital of whatever? Like they have good memory for that and they remember those kinds of facts, but they don't remember, um, it, things that happen to them in their lives very well. And that's a pretty uh, interesting mix of things. Um, I remember I read a piece on a woman who had this, this was her, you know, lived reality or whatever. And she just didn't remember, she didn't remember her own wedding day. (laughs) She didn't remember her things that it, it, she said that it was as if they were happening when she watched um, like a video of her life or looked at pictures. It was as if, she's watching a movie of someone else mm, because she doesn't wow. remember anything about it. Um, and she seemed happy. <laughs> I know it might be ideal. She seems really happy. I think this is, this is the way to, this is the key to happiness. Is I mean, but forget. she's in the moment. Does she remember right. something that happened five minutes ago? I mean, obviously we can't remember. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know, case, but, I, but yeah. I, I mean, I, there are, I mean, do you think you have a good memory? Personal memory of the, my episodic yeah. memory is pretty bad actually. Like, I don't remember a lot of things from my own life that well. Um, The reason, like, when I picture, you know, my mom when she was younger or when we were younger or when I picture scenes of my childhood, I actually um, remember photographs Yeah, that that I've looked at again and again. But I don't actually remember my childhood. And I think there are a lot of things that if I didn't have a picture of, I would have no, I would not even recognize the scene if I didn't have a picture of it. Like, but I yeah. recognize a picture, you know, I'm, I have terrible memory of my own. It, it, at I wonder best, if, it's flashes. I it's, wonder if best. that is a, is a coping mechanism. I mean, I wonder if that's actually like a good thing. What do you mean or, to cope? Oh, I don't like, know. It helps. It, it I don't know. Help I don't, I don't mean it's, I don't, I mean, I wonder if like, if it's some, if it's the brain's way of protecting us from some kind of upset, like obsessing over something or giving undue weight onto mm. some kind of experience. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it's the brain like fixing a problem so much yeah. as it, there is just a 
certain amount of human variety. And there are some people who remember a lot of personal things really well, um, vividly. And then there's people who don't remember much of it at all. I think it's related to, um, there was something I was reading about it um, when I was getting into the whole like uh, internal monologue discussion, but also <laughs> aphantasia in general, like um, which is like the ability to picture things in your mind's eye. Like if you like close your eyes and picture, you know, think about an apple, does an apple, right. you know, like how, how vividly can you actually do it? I can't do a very great job. Um, some people can't do, can't see nothing, simply nothing. Uh, I'm close to that place. I'm not exactly there, but I'm cl- I, get, I get a flash of something kind of reddish, you know, because <laughs> then it wow. disappears. Yeah. And then it disappears. It doesn't it stay. And then some people see movies, you know, some people can close their eyes and imagine whole scenarios and live them and see them as if, mm-hmm. as if they were watching a movie, which I think is incredible. I can't do anything I close can do to that. that. You can. I mean, not Megan. the whole movie for two hours, but no, but sure. you can't, but you, but you had, if you were, if you were wanting to stay yes. in. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Cause otherwise you're bored, you know, like what are you supposed to do when you're swimming or running or something? Like, do you have a, you don't you have, have thoughts th- without pictures. You have, right. You have thoughts without pictures. I don't know. Um, it's so, I remember, um, I mean, deja vu is also a weird <clears throat> thing. I remember I sw- in one of Don DeLillo's novels, I don't know if he came up with this or if this is some kind of like, cognitive theory but uh, I remember somebody in one of Don DeLillo's novels saying like the reason we have deja vu is it's the brain's way of protecting us against the unfamiliar (laughs) like every once in a while the brain kind of checks in and it's like oh you're not you're not life is not totally unfamiliar terrain to you like you have been here before it's some kind of way of grounding I mean it is deja vu is the weirdest thing I mean I had it the other day and it's just so random it's like oh, I know this person. I was in the dog park and somebody was saying something and like something was happening around me. I was like, oh my gosh, I've been here before. I've heard this before. And of course I hadn't. And it's just these mundane little moments. But so I think that to go back to like Tyler's like question about what makes us different. I mean, I think that if I were to change and become more like you and have this ability to visualize really well and have like so you have a fairly good personal memory like events no that to you? i th- i think that i revise it i have a revisionist history like there are definitely sure. there are definitely things that i remember a certain way and then if i was actually to sit down and have to like relitigate that i'm like oh actually that that did not go that way that's just how i've rewritten it in my brain but how well can you remember a scene from your past even if it's like let's let's um, set aside for a moment that it may not be accurate, but um, what can you? Pretty, see? I mean, not all scenes. I mean, but there are certainly certain scenes, like moments in time, that end up being one of those moments that are inscribed. And you can remember exact like phrases and what people look like, like what, yeah. how detail. Yeah, mm-hmm. I remember. Yeah, I remember just moments of like you know. And it's out. perfectly clear. Like, at, I mean, it's, I clear. remember like looking out the window and like seeing something and thinking, having a thought to myself and, and it being a sort of important moment. Mm. But, I mean, I end up writing about those things too, but then it's funny because like the thing I'm thinking of in particular, I ended up writing about it in an essay. And so it's there in the, in the essay. Mm. I don't know. And don't then it's know. just That's part true. of the record. I don't uh, have good memories like that. If I didn't have pictures, I think I wouldn't have a good like visual sense of what my life used to look like. Oh, wow. I don't think I would be able to like recognize myself when I was younger if I didn't have pictures of myself from when I was younger. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I, but I, I, I don't know. I think it's a good thing, actually. <laughs> like, yeah. I think it's a, it, the only thing that makes me sad is that I know that I wouldn't remember my son um, if I didn't have like incredible amounts of like pictures and like video evidence of what he was like but I don't think I would remember him like exactly what he looked like I just don't I can't you know like my brain is just not that doesn't do it huh yeah Um, I mean uh, but I think it changes your sense of who you are right like like I'm sure my personality is different I'm sure my like some some things that people point to and say this is just a this is a difference in her you know personality 
but really it's a perception difference. It's how I'm perceiving the universe and and what I'm storing and what I'm not storing is different. Mm -hmm. And I'm behaving in accordance to what I'm seeing and remembering, and which is different than what you're seeing and remembering. And that's it. And we could maybe, maybe we have the exact same, you know, tendencies personality wise. Like you have, you are just as likely to get angry at something as I am or you are just as likely to hold a grudge as I am. But if I can't remember my grudges, then like, if I can't remember being angry or even remember that scenario at all, then maybe I just don't hold grudges, but it's not because I'm chill. It's just because I, you know, Mm -hmm. like, it's just, I don't have the the hardware to keep a grudge for a very long time. Um, The show Westworld, did you ever watch that? No. Oh my gosh. I loved it so much well the first season uh, the rest of them were kind of bad like increasingly terrible but the first season was like my idea of like perfect television um and it was like a puzzle and you had to figure out what happened kind of in the end and there's like all these different timelines and all this stuff i'm spoiling it for people if they're gonna watch it but it's about robots um <laughs> it's about ai <laughs> but but there's a lot of like like it, there are a lot of ethical like dilemmas um that crop crop up in the show you know what is consciousness anyway that kind of thing yeah um and what's interesting about those robots um is that they remember everything perfectly like they have perfect memories because they have perfect you know they're not humans they don't have human brains um and when they get lost in their memories they literally get lost in that it is so perfect that when you're remembering a memory you don't you're just reliving it as Mm -hmm. if you're playing it again Mm-hmm. And then they shoot back to the present and they have kind of time traveled and they, yeah. you know, and, and they have no sense because, because of how perfect that memory That'd be is, terrible. they're fully oh my playing it. And I think you just end up becoming psychologically traumatized all the time. Something bad yeah. happens to you. It's the second something makes you think about it again, you go back. Yeah. Well, you're living you really in live. multi-dimensions. <laughs> I mean, you right. can, there's no propulsion forward because mm-hmm. you're just all over the place. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So I think that, I mean even our time perception probably will change quite a bit um, if we begin to have better memories, m- much less perfect memories. I, th- I think things like that scare me a little bit, not in the sense that I would never try it, but in the sense that it would feel as if I am going to I'm going to lose this other person that I was, and now I might be another person. Right. Yeah. Well. Okay. So, but I mean, in terms of the conversation and the comments about. Um transhumanism how did it come up exactly because i know we were talking there was discussion in the comments about rebecca traster and we were talking about mating and parenting and artificial wombs artificial wombs right and surrogacy i can't remember did she say we didn't really get into it with her but did she say artificial wombs like on the whole good i can't remember where she was i think she she said after we get to be after we 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 get equality for women she thinks it's it's like it's not the first thing she would focus on but it doesn't seem like she was oh yes because yes she was talking about shula with firestone who of course had artificial womb technology concept uh many decades ago right um yeah i mean the artificial womb thing is going to be so interesting because we've got all these trad uh people very pronatalist so they're gonna you know on one hand there's all these people who are against surrogacy and they're very up in arms about this but we've also got the pronatalist crowd and they're gonna have to pick a lane um ah yeah i think it must be a dilemma for the for the pronatalists for sure because i I think there is a there is an ethical dilemma there but it's hard to parse yeah yeah i mean i know there was uh we can go back to some of the commenters, but I, I, I wanted to actually touch on, you know, there was, it seems like there was this flurry of uh, social media um, uh, indignation over like gay men posting photos of their new babies, uh, yeah. hospital photos. They, yeah. they had a surrogate and the, 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 there they are with the baby. Some of them yeah. were like, you know, it's a moment in time. It's a snapshot. It's a photo. And they didn't always land well. There was a sort of obnoxious, uh, valence to the photographs and then and now people are sort of pouncing on that as like this is this is immoral and terrible and gay men shouldn't have babies and these babies are being ripped away from their mothers etc cetera, etc cetera. i don't know i mean yeah, <laughs> I, yeah there was a, there was a whole i saw it on my end too because i follow a lot of like you know people who are interested in technology um and there was uh 
quite a bit of like back and forth about it with people decrying it as like deeply immoral or unethical. I think that there are elements of it that are unethical. Um, and I, but, but I, we're weighing several things to, you know, and, and, and trying to figure out a balance that seems to work. Um, I don't know where that balance is. This is one of those questions where I genuinely don't know. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I could change my mind (laughs) tomorrow. Um, I think I land on the whole slightly towards the anti surrogacy side. Um, because I do think there is a, there is an ethical concern of, of this child. Does every child have a right to a mother? I mean, this is something we never thought to ask (laughs) Mm -hmm. and because it was only really nature that takes your mother away from you or your mother by, you know, uh, by choice. But when you do surrogacy, especially when the egg is different than the person who, which um, it, which it almost always is. By the way, I feel like people don't understand this. They that the think that the different. gestational surrogate is the biological mother, of the baby, which it almost what, never but, is. Uh, even that term, though, the gestational person is a biological. Okay, mother, you know, like that's what I'm saying is that uh, the p- pregnancy is not pregnancy. Uh, uh, a woman doesn't just, she's not an empty vessel. I mean, and not just, and I'm, I don't mean in th- this in the, in a political sense. I mean, actually your bodies are fusing like the, the environment of, um, you know, uh, uh, that, that, that a, a, a child okay. just states okay. in, okay. So it changes the child. It does. And it changes the mother as well. Okay. Like, so okay. there's no, it, it, this is a, like an artificial boundary that modern science has, create you know like we are like okay well here's a biological mother and this is the egg now and it used to be that the biological mother was also the okay. person that's going to carry okay. it. And so we there could be more than one that's biological what I think. mother I, I think in this sense in this in this case we are creating something like two biological mothers um what so? further complicates things <laughs> is better that, than one. well what further complicates things is that i it is the act of labor that induces certain maternal instincts you know and like the, it's contested to what degree a woman can you know build those over time even if she doesn't give birth but obviously you do give birth you have labor and then a ton of hormones shoot you know like th- in your brain and you go crazy for a while but uh those that craziness is your body and your brain thinking okay i've just had a child and now i need to act a certain way you know and you you change as a person you are sensitive to certain things in a way that you weren't sensitive to before um you know, that person who's just given birth is mm-hmm. now like her body is like, I'm optimized now to take care of this little person, you know, and be um, super mindful of their needs. It's not I don't know if it's uh, if if I didn't give birth to my own child, if my child was just presented to me, I'm not sure how those feelings would come to be you know because female female like female parenthood is different than male parenthood like men just get a baby handed to them and somebody tells them but this adoptive is but adoptive mothers get a baby handed to them and they do but uh, but a, but the why would like i mean there's uh, I, I don't understand how it could be it could possibly be the same thing in terms of how you feel and there might be a sex difference here because men do get babies handed to them one way or the other you know they Mm -hmm. they are never physically giving birth to their own child and they never 100 percent know who their child is um you can assume it and you hope so but up until like recent modern times you wouldn't you wouldn't really 100 Mm percent know so men have had to have had the they they, you know they have the ability to bond with a child regardless of like 100 percent paternal certitude which they can't really they couldn't all often have you know so they have mm-hmm. this ability to bond but with women i you know we we always give up until now like right now we always give birth to our own children and we always know who our children are um i'm not saying that it wouldn't it, it's not the case that an adopted mother couldn't love a child i've said it on this <laughs> podcast saying before. That? <laughs> i'm not i haven't said it on this podcast but i would want to adopt if i could I would, um, I want to actually, it's a plan. Like when I, my own biological children are older, I definitely, I want to foster adopt whatever. I know I've said it before. You you always say this, but I, you're always like, oh, more kids. I like kids. I like kids. Um, I feel like I'm privileged. I feel like I can give them a home. Um, and if it's something that's helpful for the, for the child then I want to do it. And I think I could love a child. that's not mine a lot, 
but would it be the same thing? Like, could I have the same instincts towards a child that I, my body knows is not mine? You know what I mean? Then I, then. Well, look, lots of adoptive parents are going to be listening to this and saying, yes, yes, you can. I mean, Mm. or there's lots of parents who do do have a biological child and an adopted child. And I mean, maybe there are degrees of difference. It's not totally the same experience, but I, I, look, I, I have never. I think there's a lot of pre- there's pressure to say that I feel the same way. I think there's a lot of pressure to feel that way and to say that. And I think it's a good instinct to say it. I think it's like more. It's more the people who are saying, "I love my bi- adopted child in the same exact like I feel the same exact way towards my <clears throat> adopted child as I do towards my biological child as females." Like I think if they're saying that, they're good people for saying that. I don't know how it could be possible that, you, you know, like, I mean, what a crazy well, thing. Well, you like, don't know to... how that could be possible, but you, you are coming from your own limited experience. But this is experience. family, right? But we're talking about, we're talking about a cultural construct that is, uh, you know, that is now replacing like a biological construct, but how could it be that it, that we evolve to feel the same, like that we have this capacity to love, like as females to love pe- children who are not ours as much as ours, like I mean, that seems like something. We Maybe would... love isn't the right word. Maybe it's I, a, yeah, it's a I, kind I, of it's a kind of psychological leash. Like there's a it's a shorter psychic leash. Maybe somehow, or if it's your own or child, just a different biological com- child. Yeah, I don't know how to phrase it because love makes it sound like less or more, and that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to say you love your own biological children more. I'm saying that there's a difference in how you might be inclined to treat them. And I don't understand how it's possible that it that it that it, that, that, that that isn't a common experience mm-hmm. because we evolved for a certain like how <laughs> if if you could just love anybody you know and in in the same way you love your own children we would have died off a long time ago you know I don't understand how that I I don't understand I mean there have yeah I look I mean there are different degrees and and in the past I don't think parents bonded with their children as much because they the chances of children dying were so huge I mean that was people would have you know in the 19 basically before the 20th century yeah mothers did not pay that much attention parents did not pay that, that much attention to their to their kids to their babies because there was a real risk in that child dying. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. I so think there's, this is I mean, a fairly there's, but there's recent more than just bonding as in paying attention. So I, the, that kind of bonding you're talking about, like we spend time together and then we love each other as humans because we've spent time each other. And now we're like bonded in that way, the way, but that you and I have that bond, right? Like we're, we're spending time with each other. We're getting to know each other. This is a bond that's developing mm-hmm. because of our attention that we're paying to each other. And yes, this could happen to anybody, regardless of relation. And it's a beautiful thing and super valuable. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that that love is less or more. I'm saying it's different (laughs) than, because when I, so when I gave immediately after giving birth, um, and I, I, I had this experience, my friends have experience. I think I've told you this before. I might've mentioned this on this podcast, but that I recognized my child's cry within like, I mean, I heard him cry once, you know, and I could pinpoint like i could hear uh, like a little from Mm -hmm. from wherever my body is like that's my kid that i know it and Mm -hmm. you know i've had lots of friends who've had like similar experiences where they've said like they were in you know the the, they had just given birth and uh you know a friend of mine was saying that to her husband you know she's right there She's out the door. She's outside for some reason. Yeah, they no, brought her I mean, out that's here. an evolutionary. And he said, yeah, he yeah, said, no, adaptation. he said, no, you can't possibly know. And she's like, no, I definitely know. And then like a second later, the nurse comes in with mm-hmm. the baby. It's a, it's a, one of those things that's like, it, 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 so, of course, psycho- something has to happen <laughs> so that a mother can be like in, entirely attuned to that child's well being. You know, there's a bunch of psychological changes that have, they have to happen so that she behaves so differently towards this one thing and knows it, you know, knows it from all the other infants out there who's to everybody else sound exactly the same, but the, to the mother, they don't. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. You cannot have that if you don't give birth to the child. No, you can't have it. However, there are mothers that do have that experience that could check all of those boxes and that are still terrible mothers. Oh, of and, course. And neglectful. Right, right, right. right. Abusive, so this is not to say this, that... this kid could be much better off. You could have a mother that had all that experience right. and the kid could still be better off being adopted right. by gay men. Right, 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 so right, right, right. So let's right. be clear. So, that's, so this is the... 
the the other bit of this so there's we're we're comparing two separate things like the best case scenario on one end and the worst case scenario on the other end and of course once you balance this all out who knows like what's the best way to to have a child and that's where i that's why i think that in on this issue while i think that there is something different about full biological motherhood that cannot be you cannot make up for it in any other way you just lose that once you don't have you, you, the same person as your <laughs> surrogate and your egg you've lost something um once you lose the uh or sorry uh, 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 the ge gestational mother mm -hmm. once you lose that person you've lost a kind of mother you've lost something that the other woman who is the egg donor cannot provide um or the egg mother. I don't know how to, I don't know what to say. I don't know what, ter this, all this terminology is nonsense, yeah, but egg donor. Um, mm -hmm. And it could be though, that as you said, this could, ch this child could be just as happy on the whole, you know, on the whole could have a wonderful life worth living. And there's should, you know, maybe there's no reason to legislate against it because these people obviously, I mean, want arguably child. they have a better life. They I mean, now that there's children. all this embryo selection, I mean, the, there was just a pronatalist conference in Austin. I mm -hmm. would have loved to have uh, been there. Uh, and they, you have embryo selection. You have people selecting for higher IQ, better, Whoa. you know, how, attractiveness. Whoa. Yeah, absolutely. There, you know this. I mean, there are yeah, biotech uh, startups yeah. that are looking at this kind of thing, but also just for health. Like if you have a bunch of embryos that right. you have frozen and that are your own, like with your partner, whatever, whatever the scenario is, if, if the technology is there to say, like, let's look at what is healthier, which of these embryos are less likely to have some kind of mutation mm -hmm. for this kind of disease or mm -hmm. cancer or whatever, mm -hmm. or like attractiveness. Ooh. How is it not? I mean, <laughs> you're giving this kid a better chance. I mean, the fact I would wonder like what people who are egg donors, people who are the result of sperm and egg donors, do they on the whole tend to be more attractive and more intelligent than average people because they have been selected for sure. that. They probably are. So, so this is so one of those things are they that having a better life? Off. This is one of those things that was pissing people off about um, the gay men who were, because there was at least one that was this, like a couple who was like talking about how their egg donor was is like beautiful like, oh somebody model, was on gorgeous, some man manosphere you know? podcast yeah I think, and they were talking about, about yes. they were talking about their gorgeous she was model a supermodel phd she only uh, could be yes. that you know and it's hard not to get grossed out when you when you 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 because i think it says something about the parent that's like selecting for that necessarily but at the same time you're right of course it gives them a better chance at life of course they're on the whole happier what makes me nervous is that i don't think we are very good at determining the indirect effects of things like we understand one thing but do we mm -hmm. understand all the things that, that yes thing downstream on? consequences right. are not so, a strength of this you know, society you get rid of like you just increased uh, you know edit this gene a little bit but do you know for sure what that what that's gonna do <laughs> to, no. maybe there's some indirect effects that we don't know I, and i don't think i could it's like a trolley problem thing I don't want to risk having deliberately ruined my child's life. Um, at the <laughs> you know what I mean. There's all kinds of ways you can do that. <laughs> There's uh, all versus just like letting nature right. happen. You know, I think that's a little bit. But look, we have kind of risk. We have a population crisis. Yeah, apparently, yeah, no. So I, what are we supposed to do? I, I am. I, I agree. This is you know one of those places where I and I don't say that for a lot of things where I it, it there's such a gray area. I think there are a lot of ethical, I mean, and, and the, when it comes to specifically gay families um, and gay men in particular, there is an ethical case to be made that here, look, this technology exists. Don't they deserve the, the opportunity to have a family just like everybody else? Like they couldn't have one biologically in any other way. Um, and, you know, now they have to do this thing, which is the baby doesn't really get to have a mother, a biological mother. Um, in their lives raising them but maybe that baby's gonna have a wonderful life anyway you know and like who are we like who are we to judge? but i i think we are we are actually in the in the right place to judge as a society I mean, should there make are rules. i think we'll see but because there are kids being raised by gay men i mean i know several of them and we'll see when those kids are 30 years old how they're talking so about this it. is where i land so this is where i land why i say that i'm mildly like i'm i'm pro the 
I, I'm icky about this side a little bit more. Like I, I'm, I lean there a little bit more than I lean on the other side because, and this is a, this is the because, um, because I don't think that that uh, the the evidence that you're talking about, I don't think that's gonna ever come to light if it turns out to be negative. You know, I think that we are going to only ever if if I thought that we can just run this experiment and we can just do like full scale like societal surrogacy. Everyone's doing it all the time. The state is uh, promoting it. The state is funding it, whatever. And people who want to have big families can have it. I would actually be hundred percent for this. If we could turn off the tap, if it turns out to be terrible, but I think that we are not going to do that. You know, I, 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 the, the medical scientific establishment, they are not interested in, uh, like, these kinds of social issues and poking the bear, so to speak. In They're this not way. interested, but you really think it'll be, it'll be memory hold. People will write think books will. about that. I don't know. I, I mean, people it, will I, write memoir. People will write sad, tragic memoirs. But They'll that make, doesn't make, change how policy. movies made that. Data uh, it can. Data Absolutely change. It like can. one or two, one mm. or two people won't. I mean, look at adoption, right? Like, so ado- there are lots of adoptees who are like, this is terrible. Like this has been, you know, but it, it is so hard to get full-scale adoption data to begin with like so how do you know you're not listening but adoption to has i mean international adoption has effectively ground to a halt i think that adoption policy has changed a lot and i mean the adoption you think it would the, you think we would roll it back it's already happened i mean you the amount of babies that were being adopted from asia in the in the yeah. eight, in the 90s i mean it, it was everywhere everywhere and now it's you just don't see it at all i mean but guatemala I, central america is it because Americans can't adopt them or those countries are sh- saying no? You those can't countries, come here? those countries started that's saying no, but that's because, different, right? Like, well, the, but that, that's like, social, I'm being, that we're being, explo- we're being exploited. So we say no. Okay. Shut that but down. That's better, but okay. who would say that? Like, who's the interest? Who's the party that's going to say we've been exploited. So let's shut this down. Whose case could be made? You know, I mean, like- I th- look in the in the foster care system in the U.S. domestically. These kind these sorts of approaches go in and out of fashion. I mean, for a long time, the rule of thumb was. Um, if, I mean, a lot of the kids in the mm-hmm. foster care system are black. Mm-hmm. For a long time, they were adopted by white families, mm-hmm. and that was considered good. Like, mm-hmm. oh, how lucky that this black kid gets to go live with this nice, you know, upper white middle family. class Christian white <laughs> family. Okay. And then th- there was pushback on that, and there was a big move. You know, a lot of those kids grew up and said, "Hey, that actually was not so great. They didn't know anything about my culture. They didn't know how to do my hair. A million things." And so among caseworkers that very much went out of style and they would purposely but not, that's not, that's not, not put those kids in with white families. And so there, I mean, that's, absolutely that's reform, the, but that's not evidence-based reform. That's just reform. You know, that's just like reform well, that happened to uh, What are you calling evidence the, though? That's just, it, it's squeaky wheels who are speaking. You need to have like track I think they're uh, track there every surrogacy outcomes. and track oh. all the outcomes and and see how they, see where they, where they land. I don't think that that is something that. Like, but how it, is that even quantifiable? What if it turned out? What if it turned out? Like, let me ask you this question: What if it turned out that black kids who were put into white families did better off overall? You know, like for whatever reason. Do you think that that is like a conclusion? that is politically say like politically sayable right now, even if it were true. I mean, it, we don't know if it is, but it would be politically even if it sayable true, in some corners. Yeah. But it wouldn't the, be politically sayable, period. It wouldn't be something that you could actually say. I think say. the Heritage Foundation would publish papers saying as much. I think AEI would uh, say as much. I mean, but again, like but how do you quantify change anything. how the problem is how do you quantify it? Because if, if your metric is they graduated from high school at this rate, they went to college at this rate, they earned these salaries, mm-hmm. then that is something that you can track. But yeah. I, this, these are ineffable. I mean, I think that, it, look, it's, it's really but hard. That's, that's I have changed, right? Like, and, so that's something that you can, that, that is worth tracking. So but, simple, I mean, simple rates, like if you had a bunch of kids with, uh, let, let's say a, a, a group of kids who were, you know, had a gestational carrier or whatever, um, versus like their own biological mothers, maybe you could test, uh, their health in early infancy, you know, that would be what I would be interested mm-hmm. in. That would be mm-hmm. where I would think that the biggest differences would be because that's where the differences between me and my husband were, which is that he didn't notice 
the little things that I noticed. And it wasn't because he loved like any less. He loved a lot, you know, and was spending all of his time. Um, mm-hmm. Like he took like months and months off, like for um, p- with paternity leave, which was so wonderful. Um, so he was there committed 100 percent, but he just couldn't pick up on the things that I could pick up on. Right. So I'd be war- I'd be interested in in, you know, higher rates of like infections, you know, like little things like that mm-hmm. and how yeah, well, and whether that tracked I mean, over maybe time. Maybe it has been studied. I don't know. It ha- I it couldn't have been. It hasn't happened often. Really? We don't we don't really do surrogacy that frequently. Oh, and you're talking about surrogacy, not not adoption. But adoption, it's probably been studied a lot. Mm, so maybe. Um I think that the something like that it, the reason I, 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 I've I I am on the I don't know about this side is because I disagree with you. I think that we will not study it. Like we will not, not just because it's inherently difficult to study. There's that, but also because there will be powerful political lobby that will make it so that we can't study it because then, then we're like infringing on the rights of uh, gay people to have equal rights under the law. And there are a lot of people who are just like, well, we just don't. Right. Well, they were not, gonna... no, not nothing to see here, but I, nothing, okay. But I think that's going to happen. And I think we won't be able to turn it around, even if it turned out to be bad. Not that I think it necessarily will be, but that if it turns out to be, this is, I don't think this is a, we have the political climate that will allow for the want to it, it even to be studied like without like and, and we know this with like the gender stuff there is no there is no big scientific movement to really understand what's going on at well, all at all there like, are starting to be i th- the, the are five you kidding them, you know i mean like but it's tiny compared to the huge complex that's like yay hormones at the moment but the you know the yay hormones complex is actually relatively small it's just that it's amplified in the culture at the moment I mean, at the end of the day, the number of people who want the facts on this greatly outnumber the the that doesn't the mean yay that pronouns the, people. The that does, but 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 that's actually really interesting that that you even phrase it that way because even though the, uh, the people who want the real facts on this are large in number, what the I mean, you know, look, the, all happened. the medical institutions okay. say, what all the medical associations say is exactly what we would expect like if, at at the moment but look what's happened in europe they have shut they've the, turned, these they've things turned around. down in, in europe it turned out to be bad enough that they turned it around so but and maybe I, if it's not maybe it's not that bad you know maybe it's just what a bit. are you maybe kidding just... i thought it was the worst thing ever it is bad no no i mean i, I mean I, uh, surrogacy like let's say oh. it turned out to be like i i think there is a it, it can be extremely bad and then maybe in many many years we turn it around We'll see. You know, I I think that you're right to see that that in in Europe they're turning some things around. I don't think this will fully ever leave the trans track. Like I think there's no there's not never going to be a full we we're banned. Really? This. Uh, I mean, uh, I think it's changing. But yeah, okay. But on the surrogacy thing, and then and then we should move on. I mean, I do. I, I I'm with you. I really don't know. I think we can't know. It I it may turn out to be that it's just fine. That there are people who just have these kinds of lives again we kids used to are very freak resilient. out about in vitro fertilization and kids are very resilient that's yeah. the other thing the kids are extremely and, resilient and modern day kids live wonderful lifestyles compared and they to- have all kinds of parents i mean the thing is like i again i don't want us to like make judgments based on a couple of narcissists on social media who just yeah. happen to post very I don't think we should judge it on that at all. Like, I mean, I just that like that's a snapshot in time. I mean, a you know these whoever these people are, it's a snapshot in time. Literally, we don't know the whole story. Maybe they're I mean, joking. Maybe they're like being like yeah. I mean, you know, they're it's, being a certain it's, way. It's, it's social not media. a good like, it de- you know the joke did not land. Let's yeah. just be clear. But yeah. I mean, I know a lot of these families. They yeah. have women in their lives that are very much involved in yeah. the child's life. It's you just don't know. Um, I, I think there are lots a lot of, of ways I agree with to that. be a family. I, 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 well, that's that's such a cute little cliche. Thank um, you. There are lots of ways to be a family. But um, are we a family? I don't know. Oh, you, you, me, and uh, occasionally Hugo. Yeah. In a I way, mean, in, in, in a I, way. I don't know. I, tore I mean, Hugo I would away say from his mother. Oh, you did. When? Yeah. How old are puppies when we take away them from their families? And why don't we do that to children? Uh, ten weeks. But we like babies are like pop out right out of the oven and we're like 
time to separate. I know. Yeah. No, <laughs> with, exactly. With, with animals, they need some no, time No, you would never. Parent, but... Right, exactly. <laughs> but I, anyway, no, I, I, I agree with you. I just think that the, we don't know. And I, if, if I were, if I could learn, know for a fact that we had the kind of political and in, institutional medical system where if things were to go wrong, we could turn it around. Um, and I believed in that. Um, I would, then I would say, let's test, let's try it out. Because I do think that it is, if, if we can give everybody the right to have a family, you know, like, a, and a child and how that feels to have like a biological child in their life, I think we should, we should do that. That's a, that's a good thing mm-hmm. that they have. Yeah. Um, and I'm for that, but I just don't think we would correct. That's the thing. I just think that there would be such political pressure to not see something. And then a lot of lives would get ruined and maybe we would correct, you know, but like, 50 years like I mean, whatever look at, all, like, the, look at think... all this research that's been done about abortion i mean like oh look at the terrible outcomes of abortion there's plenty of think tanks and people talking about regret abortion regret and you would think that that would be very politically inexpedient very inconvenient for no, the majority because americans of want the culture americans because a good deal of americans are opposed to abortion so yeah but not, more more you know. want, but yeah but a good deal of americans are also opposed to to gender uh nonsense so right i i mean that doesn't but i think that this is much more akin to the gender nonsense than it is to abortion um okay but i'm i guess i'm saying that there's always uh there's there's always room people people every there will always be something being studied no matter what it is, it is being studied. Uh, and if there's enough interest in it, it'll get out there. Look, just because it's not on the front page of the New York right. Times doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Sure. I mean, that, mm, sure. But I, I think that there's uh, there a lot of things get neglected that need to be studied. Like the birth control thing, only now are we really looking into the fact that birth control can have some pretty terrible effects Hormonal on a woman's body. Control. Hormonal mean, birth control. Yeah. Um, that's, a, that's a discussion that's happening that you know, has kind of quietly happened in some corners of the internet and corners of like activist spaces for a long time, but only is it kind of sort of a little bit like sort of touching mainstream uh, Mm -hmm. attention right now, you know, right now, right now, many, many, many decades after it became widely available. um, And we're lucky that it didn't actually do a lot of damage, but there's some things that do that have the kind of effect where it's not extremely evident until you you really study the thing at a really broad Mm -hmm. scale um and there are risks to that too you know and there's a potential for harm there as well and i i'm i don't know if i had more faith in our system to be iterative to be really good at self-correction then i would i would i would be like like let's try it let's try everything take a, out. Take a longer i would view. i would say let's try everything out but i just don't think our system is like that i, I, I think mean, there, there are, some are things lots that are of things so we're never going back for example like we're never going even if we found out today that uh let's say a hormonal birth control are going it is truly terrible and now everybody knows we're not going to ban it i don't know you that know? it's truly terrible though what do you mean i'm by saying that? even if it is Okay. Even if it is, even if it is like it and it turns out it's re- no, it because, is bad for because us. the costs outweigh the the negatives. I mean, I'm sorry, the val- the um, benefits outweigh the costs at the I mean, truly terrible. I mean, it, it, the, the truly terrible that you're referring to, is that more terrible than a million babies being born that sh- shouldn't you know be born? I mean, we don't want to have a world where women cannot control their fertility. Right. right. So. Right. so we would be I think we would be making a similar calculus like we would say that do we want to go back to a world where people can't have right you know like families of their choosing or whatever and then and then yeah even if there was a harm so I think that before something becomes a norm that is accepted by everybody and and we build our lives around it we build our society around it so when it comes to something like birth control like we've women have taken for granted that we can yeah no our entire social structure our entire mating structure is built around this it's built around it and now what happens if you take that away who who knows what things collapse who knows who knows what will happen it's a big risky move and we might have made it you know in 1970 but we won't make that change now even if we we know exactly the harms you know like if we knew the exact harms in 1970 uh we might 
we might feel differently mm. about passing it. Um, I mean, how harmful? I don't want to get too far down this, but how harmful is it really? I mean, birth control. I, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's that harmful. Control. I mean, it's so a little. Exactly. It, it's so, a little. So why are we so talking about this? I was just giving it as an example of something that wouldn't change, even if because it's just too deeply. Uh, it's 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 too deeply enmeshed into yeah. our society and how what we expect that we're not going to change it um and i think that we have it is something that we have neglected to study and we've neglected to be um very honest with ourselves about what we're doing so that this uh, sarah hill's book is like fascinating we talked about it a million mm-hmm. years ago on this podcast but um it was very shocking to me actually and it made me very anti birth control uh hormonal birth control in the sense that i would not recommend it to my daughter i would not recommend it to it like i would i would advise against really? it with the with but, the, the mean, women that i knew in my life was sexually active and there are other it, ways i would say i would advise the other ways i would say do something else like yeah, do but something that's not reliable than, what if she um, was a flake what if she <laughs> couldn't keep her act together like and it was she was going to get pregnant otherwise. So you're just like, you're going to say there's going to be one, co- like, there's no, one. that's not one. Like, that's scenario. not, I, I, most, most 16 year olds are who flakes. is just going to sit there and have a lot of sex, but she will take one pill a day. Like, like, or nor plant. I don't know. There's all kinds of things. I look, people are, teenagers are, do not have their acts together. I, I, I don't think know. That that's that's we we. I'm we, sure yours would be. Teenage pregnancy has gone down dramatically be, but for I, a reason because those but, girls get put on the pill immediately. But then they start those same like cohort like their women start having uh, unplanned pregnancies in their twenties and it's it's more of like what you want really like than it is necessarily you're super stupid. It's not as if the case of teenagers are geniuses and women in their twenties aren't. <clears throat> or they're that they're more mature than the women in their 20s Wait. it's just that women in their 20s start to want kids more like okay. if you look at if you look at um single mother births for example mm-hmm. like in, in the united states they're not happening in um uh, at the rates with it used to be a teenage teenagers a, right a, a teenage thing and now it's a 20s thing like <laughs> it's a 20s thing in a way that it so so that is some evidence that um, I think it's they're not probably just about having, maturity. I think they're probably, um, well, I don't, I don't know the data, but I mean, teenagers are not getting pregnant because they are on hormonal birth control. Yeah. Right. Right. So, but, like but the, the thing is that they're responsible unwed- enough to take birth control. I think they're responsible enough to put on a condom. No, no, they're not. No, no because Why they're going to be, because so it's different. like, they're going to be pressured because Guys don't want to use them, and they're going to be pressured into no. Okay, then the, we should take away women's rights because women are too stupid to say no to guys when the pressure them well, to do things. I mean, that's ridiculous. I just, I can't. I just, I, I mean, I don't get it. Uh, being on hormonal just, birth control is far more reliable than okay. using condoms. Anyway, I don't know how we got on this. We're going to talk about. Uh, we were going to talk about the response to the <laughs> Rebecca Traster uh, interview, uh, where we did touch on this a little bit. But um, I don't know. Is there anything else? Uh... We should have talked about some of this with Rebecca. I would have wanted to know, I know how, she, I how know. she feels about like birth control on the whole. You know, birth control 70 years later, whatever, however long it's been. I think years. she would probably agree with me that it's the the benefits outweigh the, the costs. And mm. um, it's uh, it's very, you know, we're kind of to the, to the extent to which the extent to which we are now revisiting this and speaking finding real harms is it's actually pretty pretty minor it's- but that's just what we know now right like i mean even the state of the evidence is one it was super delayed that we even got to the point that we can have an open conversation about it you know sarah hill's book was just throat clearing every other every other paragraph i'm not saying that you mm-hmm. don't take it i'm not saying that we should do something like she's like again and again i was so annoying to read i totally understand why she felt like she had to do it totally understand it but it was annoying that she felt like she had to so there's i mean i i don't you know that finally we're getting this book after you know that really we should have gotten a few decades at least two like one or two decades we had enough information about it we could study it and we could talk about it we could you know have a book out but now it, it it takes so long to get to the point that we can even have an honest conversation but there are and then we don't books. even know we don't even know if this is honest yet there might be other stuff out there that people are unwilling to talk about because it's still too spicy to talk about it. Um, well, I mean, there was, uh, there was, um, 
like how Ricky, do you know Ricky at which Lake point? did did the business of the business of uh, birth control that was um a pretty that was a documentary that got a lot of traction that was based on um Holly Grigg Spall's book Sweetening the Pill um and I mean there's lots of books around I about know, this I, I think that it's, it's not it, like once it's a you have, when you have a climate of suppression even if that is or of where there's like a political political motivations and biases skew science and and scientific like like study quite a bit and the the extent to which it's published and the extent to which we act on it when you have a climate where there there's that skew that exists we don't know at what point we've reached truth or haven't you know we don't we don't we can't because we don't have a system that actually functions well uh, on any given and 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 we don't each issue is toxic in a different way. So what might be sayable on one issue is not sayable in another yeah. issue. Um, and it also might be that the activists who are active in one issue are very powerful, very organized, but they are not so very well organized in another issue. And so that issue can be something we tackle. It's 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 complicated, but I, I, I would feel more comfortable with these kinds of radical social experiments if I felt like we were living in a society where our science was truly open, um, where our media was reliable and not deeply biased. Um, but given that I don't trust our institutions to tell us that something is wrong, very like at the very least soon, <laughs> that, but maybe never, you know, maybe they, how do I know that now we've gotten to truth? How do I know that now I've been allowed to study everything? Because it's still a restricted environment. It's not as if the environment is super open now. It's just that some bits of truth have like squeaked out. Yeah, no, you know? it's, it's maddening. I know. Um, if that changed, I would, I would be much more of a radical social experimenter because I don't, I don't have like a, you know, religious, like underpinning of the way things that should be. And I definitely feel like you don't more, <laughs> more, um, uh, freedom for people is a good thing. More equality is a good thing. I just don't want to walk too far down, you know, in a path that we can't get out of because our institutions suck. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah. that, that's kind of where I am. Um, on all yeah. of it. But I, I see your point. Um, definitely that it's not, it's not actually that bad. Um, so who knows? <laughs> I think it's coming whether or not we like it. I think it's going to be here because Paris Hilton is, has the money and oh, someone's gonna oh, this, pay the her, surrog you know? the surrogacy yeah, yeah yeah but i mean some all of the, all of these radical no, I know, experimentations I know. are coming because someone's gonna say yes uh, uh, you know somebody's gonna like have the technology somebody else is gonna say yes to the technology and then you know we're off i don't races. i do yeah i mean we should move on but i i just want to say though that the idea that every woman who is a i know you don't like this term but that is the term gestational surrogate the idea that that is automatically an exploitive situation, I think is not true. A lot of, yeah. a lot of these women, they want to do it. They like being pregnant. It's easy for them. They can make a lot of money. Most of them are married and already have kids. I think you already have to have kids in order to do in some, it. And many of them. Yeah. Yeah. And many of them and, in the and United States. Anyway. And it's something that they actually feel good about and are proud about. And it's something that they can do. So by no means is this some kind of like, you know, weird version of the sex trade or some kind of human trafficking it, thing at all it depends we don't know like it, sometimes yes maybe but i mean but you don't I, know the amounts like that's no, we don't thing. know the we amounts know. but it could be it could be 90 90 percent of surrogates are exploited and 10 percent aren't and they're happy the 10 percent are happy and they're talking about it or it could be the other way around it could be 90 percent are happy 10 percent are not happy but the unhappy ones are very loud okay we don't yeah. actually know and that's the what un, that's the what unhappy frustrates ones me. are always that's what louder <laughs> I, I think it depends. I think it, when you say in the porn industry, like the, the porn stars were like, I love it. Yay. Like they're, they're, kind of, they're the ones that they're, are making a lot of money. Yeah. They're making more money. I think they're, they're more visible. No, like the sex, sex workers who are like, I love sex, the sex trade. And like, like they're, they're a little bit more. Visible. I mean, I think extremists on either end are always more, <laughs> most visible. Like whoever they, those extremists are, they're always more, more visible. And I don't know who the extremists are. Like, I don't, I don't know what the reality is. And that makes me deeply mm -hmm. uncomfortable with all these things. Um, I think though, but it, it, in addition to like exploiting the women thing, I don't, I agree with you. I don't, I don't find that to be as, as uh, moving of a concern because I think yeah, these, these are adults and a lot of them, as you yeah. said, they're mothers. They, they're in many agencies and at least in the United States, like require you to be a mother um, yeah. in order to, and like that people like that too. It's like pr proven track record of you know having children yeah 
Um, so that's a different person. And they're, they're, the amount of consent that they have going in because they already know what it's like is different. Um, I'm less concerned about moms and more concerned about the kids. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the kids. The kids growing the, up the, with what aff- about the kids? affluent. Uh, what about the kids? The, all these, these kids being, ra- being, being raised by influencers. <laughs> How Paris be, Hilton. How can somebody be somebody ev- is being raised by Paris Hilton. Anything but but a great life. Do you think Paris yeah. Hilton was? I bet she is a surprisingly good mom. Actually, I. Like, you know what? I did not see that show. I don't know anything about her. Paris Hilton. I mean, what show? Like, well, I know. I mean, she's doesn't like, she have a show? How? What are we seeing? But somebody. She's was like talking, Kim Kardashian. She just but, exists. Oh, is she just live streaming? But, but we have exists. recently seen something with her. No, Paris. No, that doesn't she? Have, she has a show. Oh, she does? More called recently. Paris okay. is Burning or something. It's not called that. It's <laughs> Paris something. You yeah, know, I think she has a new, like, un- unscripted series. And that's why we're seeing her go uh, going and playing with her baby for an hour a day. Yeah. Um, and she handing it back to the nice. nannies. And she's, <laughs> well, she's look, like, he's I, my baby. I mean, you know just... what's another thing? I mean, all the kids of these of these influencers, they're, they're going to nice grow up and have lawsuit, be able to <clears throat> sue their parents for exploiting them and making money from them. I, mean, I hope they do. Discussion. Oh my god! I, know. I hate. I hate those. Like, I'm, we're a family. Look at us. I'm oh my a, gosh! Yeah, uh, no. It's especially sick. when they're trad. They're like, look at us being a trad family. I'm like, mm-hmm. you guys have cameras on your kids. Yeah. Twenty four. Just like just there's like nothing the traditional about what they're doing. Like, yeah, it is extremely exploitative and and terrible. I hope they sue sue those parents, but yeah, yeah. Um, no. Anyway. anyway, we don't know. It's a it's a big ethical. I think it's an ethical, and I totally get both sides. And I wish we lived in a different kind of society that enabled societal innovation responsibly, you know? Mm-hmm. And if that was true, then I would, I would just be all, I would you mean gung-ho. regulations. I would. Yeah. I would say uh, regulations. <laughs> yeah, maybe wanna, some. Yeah. You like, like stop maybe, progress. With all these you know, who's not going to stop progress China. Mm. And they're going okay. to have like an army of artificial womb babies. And they're going to mm-hmm. be like superhuman. And then we're going to be like, uh-oh, we have to compete with China. And I know. Then and then gonna we're going to have to have an army of AI soldiers it's a, it's to a, fight yeah. them. And it's, it's going to be the babies versus an arms the race. AI soldiers and who will win. Chinese baby. Who has more power? A Chinese baby or an American AI robot? Hmm. The Chinese baby that is like part cyborg because of they stole American AI technology. Right. And... What about the Chinese baby that's raised by gay male influencers? No, that's the best baby of all. Yeah. That baby, that baby Especially if is... they were like, you know, health and wellness, like, oh my uh, God. you know, get, they're going to live 300 years because they don't eat. They only eat one meal a day. It's a shake. It's a, it's a grass, Green shake. grass shake. <laughs> only grass yeah um wait okay so we've been at this for like too long yeah we've no, talked wait. about this for a lot i was gonna say a few things about uh this new documentary about george floyd fun <laughs> now for something Another... completely different i mean but again you know it actually goes to what you were saying just this inability to trust anything yeah um yeah. i mean i don't want to spend too much time on this but there is this new documentary out it's called the fall of minneapolis and it uh revisits the 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 George Floyd, um, the death of George Floyd and the arrest and the trial of Derek Chauvin and the other police officers. And, you know, the fact is that there, there was a lot of footage that was just not, was not released to the public at all. Um, Mm. so there was a local Minnesota news anchor named Liz Collin, and she made this documentary. She happens to be married to the, um, police union head in, um, I think in Minneapolis, somewhere around there. Um, and basically she made this film showing the side of, of law enforcement. Um, and it, it's pretty convincing. I have to say, I know that documentaries of this nature are slanted. Um, but the, the fact is that, you know, the, there's, if you were to watch all of the, the, the entire footage, I mean, more than the nine minutes, I think there's like 17, maybe 20 minutes of body cam uh, footage from the cops that was not released to the public for a long, long time. There's a whole bunch of things happening in this incident. And it really looks like 
Derek Chauvin was not doing anything that was not in the police manual. And he was trying to, um, he was trying to keep George Floyd from fleeing after they had called for the EMT. They called for an ambulance 36 seconds after George Floyd was on the ground, 36 seconds. And there was a big screw up with the, with the dispatch and the ambulance went to the wrong place. And that was like a total mess. And um, it's pretty incredible that he's in prison. And so were the other cops, by the way. Um, and they're by no means were they all white. One of them was actually black. Yeah. But it's, um, are they going to, you know, now that like documentaries out great. Right. <laughs> I think things will change like when people forget about it and like, then justice can happen silently. You know what I mean? Like they can, like uh, people can agitate on their behalf and they can like quietly get out, but it, um, I mean, not I, anytime soon. No. I mean, so Derek Chauvin, he was found guilty. He was, you know, found guilty on second degree, unintentional murder, third degree murder, and second degree manslaughter. Mm. Um, so he got 22 and a half years in prison. I guess there's, there's a possibility of supervised release after 15 years, which would be two, two thirds of his sentence. He was recently stabbed in prison, by the way. Um, and that's also a bizarre story. So he's in prison in Arizona, I believe. And he was stabbed by another inmate quite severely. He was hospitalized. There was, mm. you know, initial reports were that, you know, he was in pretty grave condition. He is expected mm. to just survive now. But then it turns out that this guy who stabbed him was like an FBI informant. And mm. then there were some reports that this guy was a member of the Mexican mafia, but the guy is not Mexican. He has like a kind of um, Eastern European last name. I don't know. Very strange. But uh, the the point is that the the absolute pageantry around George Floyd's funeral um, and the talking points of every politician, not only in the area, but in the in the country from Nancy Pelosi to to the, you know, the president. I mean, not the president at the time was uh, was Trump. So, OK, but like, you know, Democratic politicians, um, the fact that we have had, you know, town squares named after George Floyd all over the country mm -hmm. as if he's Malcolm X or Martin mm -hmm. Luther King. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he was kind of a bad guy, like really kind of a bad guy. <laughs> and um, he pretty clearly died of a heart attack because he Megan. had fentanyl in his system. Yeah. But um, so who, you know, I mean, it, it makes me really depressed <laughs> i'm not surprised uh you know you go through one of these things once and then you think okay maybe twice and then you start to think okay and the next time it happens you withhold judgment you don't trust mm -hmm. anything you're you right sort of just look back and it's a terrible place to be and i think it is really devastating for a society as more and more people begin to join the I can't trust what I see in here. Okay. Yes. We, then we get to Russia. It, you know what I mean? Like we get to Soviet, the Soviet Union in its last days where people just didn't trust what they mm -hmm. saw and heard. Um, that's a that's a terrible place for a society to be one because, I mean, I think it just makes everybody reflexively conservative, you know, even like reactionary in the way that like we were just discussing in, ter in terms of like surrogacy or like all these like in another time oh progress getting everything's getting better for everyone yay you know that's a great attitude that attitude requires a certain kind of society we well yeah, optimism and a societal it amount requires a certain amount of optimism trust, and trust trust yeah right and when you don't have trust you can't have the optimism you have nihilism and cynicism instead and i think that's that's what i'm experiencing that's what a lot of people are experiencing it's turning people who used to be very into like optimistically into progress um into we are going to get closer and closer to the right side of history into people who are thinking what is the right side of history mm -hmm. like you know and how can i know it and who's going to tell me you know i should just yeah well look what's happening with with israel gaza i mean yeah. there's absolutely no consensus i trust only what i see with my own eyes and my own ears and that's it like that's what like that's the kind of thinking that we get to which is awful mm -hmm. you know which is awful awful for a uh, for a society but even highlighting these cases, like look at all the ways in which we can't trust our institutions. I almost feel guilty 
because I think, okay, so I am helping in decrease the trust because I am showcasing the ways in which we can't trust our institutions. Um, so maybe the, 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 the rule should be, you can do this, you can highlight these, um, but also you must present a solution or be part of that solution. Somehow. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's not like, our job. No, we're just the, I mean, it's too easy to criticize. We're, you know, we're critics, but that's the easiest, that's the easiest job. You know, the easiest job is to stand, like pull yourself to the sidelines and say, I'm not a part of this mm -hmm. and I'm going to, you know, call out, um, of fouls or whatever uh and it, it seems like you're the most you're the best person it's like a very grandstanding kind of position it's also an easy position to take yeah i, I, mean, I don't know hard. what the solution is but i mean also you don't want to just throw out you know shallow solutions uh, i think some solutions are you know tr trying to find a solution trying 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 i think that you, you try 10 solutions you finally find a good one i you think know? i do think we should uh reinstitute some kind of national service I think yeah. I think everybody graduating from high school should be required to do some kind of service for a year at least before going to Harvard, I've been saying where it. they can lose their minds. Girl, we should we should get them yeah. we should get I agree. military. We I, should get a one, I don't know one year military service. Military or some kind of like AmeriCorps sort of we thing. We can't if we allow distinctions, then they will become class distinctions. If well, if you allow if you allow it to be like the liberals will go in one way and the conservatives will go one way. And you can't let them do that. So you can make it so that the military can do multiple things. Okay. You know? So okay. the military itself, enough. you can join the okay. military. Yeah, I don't because I don't want to have a gun or anything. Build a hospital trust, or whatever. Trust myself. Yeah. Like yeah. Oh, but you can do that right now. Like I know people in the military who are like computer scientists. What are they doing? You okay, know? I wouldn't like, be able to do that either. Right. I'd have to like play the oboe. I would have had to play the oboe in the military band. So what could you? What could you do that is like? A, what could I do? That's a military no, useful podcast. Skill. Podcasting? I mean, we could do podcasting um, for the military. Uh, complain on? I don't know. I could. Um, I don't know what I have. I don't have any skill that the military would find useful. That's sad. That's terrible. Mm, I know other. Languages. I think you could tell people what to do. I think you could go straight to officer. Oh, girl, yeah. yeah. I I uh, I would I would actually like to be like strategically on the like like battle, like figuring out what's going mm -hmm. on, combat mm -hmm. st strategy. I think that's that would be amazing. But I actually don't know anything about it, so that would still be a lot to learn. I oh. just I think forcing people to get out and interact with people unlike them is uh, crucial. crucial. I mean, we have become so siloed. Yeah. I mean, it's an obvious thing to say, but mm -hmm. it has reached like absolutely like crisis proportions at this point. Um, it's, it's also le it's, it's directly related to the trust crisis that we literally mm -hmm. don't see each other. We don't know each other. Um, you know, it, it, it's the, the kind of thing where like when in public health, when they talk about noble lies, you know, like the, I mean, they don't right. call it a noble lie, but when they institute noble lies, it, it, it feels to me as if, we have a bunch of people at the top with master's degrees who don't know anybody that, you know, who don't know normal people and who don't know how normal people. No, I mean, like and it used to be, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but it seems to me that it used to be it, going to college meant you were expanding your horizons. Yeah. You no. were going now out it's like, into the world. It is the opposite. It's contracting. Now you your go in horizons to yeah, agree with to become else. a more provincial Absolutely. person yeah. than you Absolutely. were. I, I, there, there is one you know kind of viewpoint that you all adopt and it's an, it's it's shocking how well they adopt it too i didn't think that it was so possible until i started meeting a lot of younger people who sounded exactly the same they had that like you know it's kind of like a chatbot language you oh, know yeah. what i'm talking about like yeah. it's like they, they talk the same way it's like you mm -hmm. are all chatbots like, can you just have a original thought like you know and, and or, or use normal language that you understand fully you know and explain the same situation to me um, but I, yeah, you're right that college used to serve a different kind of purpose. It doesn't serve that purpose now. I, I agree. I think, I, I think the military is the best way to do it because it's, it's, it's an institution that already exists. We can definitely mobilize it. Um, it would never work. Nobody would ever allow it to pass, especially congressmen, because they don't want their kids to ever get anywhere near poor people. Um, do they though? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, what about like the, we won't have the draft ever again because of congressmen? You don't think that congressmen, congress people want their kids? I I don't know about they that. They don't that's want a people, that's a little yeah. cynical. I think they want uh, their kids to be good people. Most of them do, especially the Republican. You think that the Republicans are going to be like? I don't think no, my kid different. can't interact with this 
Really? I think there's there is the there is what they say, and then there's how they act. I I don't feel that politicians are any different than the class that they belong to. I, right? I like, mean, I shouldn't even say just Repo- I mean, there are de- there are liberals and conservatives that care deeply about being part of the world, mm-hmm. and and want their kids to under to have you know some kind of shared humanity That's with true f- the rest true. of the world there are exceptions to every class everywhere but i'm I'm saying in the sense that i'm addressing congressmen as members of like uh, uh sadly one of the one of the reasons why our system is so broken is that they can get out and they can make so much money um mm-hmm. and they are eventually like maybe not the, the first year you know but f uh, so many of them go into lobbying make a lot of money afterwards um or go into institutions where particularly their knowledge of like government is utilized to make a lot of money for businesses and they end up becoming very wealthy. Um, it's a common, you know, sort of track for, for government officials and, or sorry, um, for, for congressmen. Um, and it's terrible, you know? So I think they're going to act like members of their class, like economic class, not so much like that they're politicians and that's why they're evil, but that, Maybe. I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, why are you talking about senators? There's a lot of like low level congressional people that are not wealthy. Enough that they're going to pass something like that? I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of them. I mean, who are we talking about? It's all kinds of I think of people schmucks. change a lot when they are like, like it's, it's like the draft, you know, like the draft would put their own kids on the front lines. So they won't, so they're always going to be like a college exception. If, even mm-hmm. if, if we had a draft, there would always be an exception that could get their kids out. Because you're not going to do that. You're not going to screw yeah, over your own But I kids. mean, this is a different kind of, we've, we've established that our draft is not about being on the front lines necessarily. Not necessarily. Yeah. But yeah. definitely in some way enforcing like people, like it, 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 people walking around uh, together, like from different paths of life. I think that would mm-hmm. be really extremely helpful. <laughs> mm, also, yeah, I think that it's just, it has a um, wonderful effect of bringing people back in into well, what are we doing anyway? <laughs> and why are we doing it? You know, and like, I think there's a sense of we don't pay attention to what's going on with our government, what our military is doing, why it's doing what it's doing. I think if we started to be forced to participate, we would participate. Yeah, have some skin in the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah. our kids are there. Right. Now we care. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, well, that's good. Okay. We solved that. We solved that. I've been saying it. I've been saying it for so long that I think we should, there should be a mil- enforce israel like two-year military mm-hmm. service mm-hmm. i think and and, and israel's like I, I mean i have been having an argument with somebody online about this it's been ongoing for a little while i've stopped responding but i think israel is a great example of a country that is really good at integrating um people who do not um come from this same, same palestinians well, and israelis no but like no, israelis or like russian yeah. israelis like russian yes, jews and there's a lot of i mean there's a, yes exactly an ethiopian uh yeah the uh, jewish israelis diaspora and, is yes. like pretty like global like it's, it's a global pretty, community it's pretty united um, colors actually of very diaspora. much yes. very much very much but they come together and they're and they unite under the israeli flag and they start to see themselves as Israeli, even studying, I was looking into this a little bit, like what is the ethnic composition of Israelis? And it's really hard. It's a hard thing to study because um, Israelis are like, well, I'm Israeli now. Like they don't want to do the Israeli dash Ethiopian, you know, like that's something Americans do, but Israelis um, successfully like integrate into the society enough that they don't want to do it. And they even, they like Hebrewize their name, mm. you know, like, Somebody was pointing at the Gal, Gal Gadot's family was named something else. They had a mm. much more like not Israeli sounding name. And then they sort of Hebrew fight it um, when they came to Israel, which I think is really interesting. And that's a good example of integration going well. You know, like you have all these people who have who come from all different parts of the world. They share a religion mostly, um, but they are they are. It sounds Very like uh, I can think of together. another country that had that original concept a long time ago. Uh, were we were we ever someplace. were we ever as global though as Israel is? Slowly, like, not 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 as fast. But not as fast. Abs- but I mean, yeah, we, we didn't. You know, it was a long time ago. They didn't have airplanes. It took a while. Yeah, it but took, it, took we, a couple centuries. We were like different shades of white people and like Protestants for a long well, time. Well, but then, I mean, Italians were not considered in. white 
there were that was later I mean, though they, they came in later that's what i'm yeah. saying yeah it took yeah. a long time it took several centuries um and the i mean the religion thing was uh you know to break free from religious constraints but an incredibly puritanical country i mean it mm -hmm. is a re fundamentally religious country the united states uh so less so these days but less yeah, so these I, days i mean but... we 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 were we have a we had a similar way of integrating and we had a focus on integrating we don't really feel that way now though i think that something right. has changed in the way that we even in the united states approach integration this whole like success story of look at how great america has been at integrating immigrants um i think has been true historically but the circumstances are not the same anymore and we are coasting on the fact that our immigrants many of them not not so much like south of the border immigrants but like many of them are coming in from these visas as like super educated um like this highly educated class mm -hmm. and that the kind of group integrates a little bit differently um but we're coasting on that a little bit i don't think it's necessarily that we are so wonderful at integrating anymore um nor no, that not nor a, I, don't, I, I don't that's I don't a pretty recent it. phenomenon that we're mm -hmm. not able to integrate we don't want to we think it's no, evil but i like, mean it's as, like it's like a supremacist or yeah but i mean <laughs> as recently as the 80s i feel like the melting pot idea was very much like top of mind it was, it was the, it's a great it was, idea yeah you know it's a great idea. i even liked the, the the idea before then was tomato soup and i think that was the best idea tomato um, soup mm. and so the tomato soup to the melting pot of like fondue right mm. so the tomato soup here's how it how it's um is different is that tomato soup is essentially still tomato soup you know maybe you're adding celery and then you add some parsley and then you add some garlic and onion you're adding all these like little things but it is mm -hmm. still in character still tomato soup so but who are the tomatoes like the like the pilgrims yeah like the, the original the founding so the, found, so the founding of the country yeah, it's still okay. the, it's still that constitutional <laughs> we came together so the and, other people um, are just spice and seasoning and, and are marginalized yeah, yeah. Mm, see i don't yeah. the tomato soup sounds pretty uh pretty colonial oppression -y to me oh my god yeah i yeah. i but and like where it's the soup container is like the indigenous people <laughs> just you know we just hollowed your, them out poured yourself hollowed them out over them toss yeah. yeah um toss what was there before sure yeah but I, yeah. yeah, we just don't do it that well anymore. Israel does. Um, I think but that's they have also it. been right. But Israel has also been united under this cause in an mm -hmm. unprecedentedly intense way. I don't mm -hmm. know what it mm -hmm. was. You know, Israel has not been without its problems. And that and that, that definitely mm -hmm. increases. Yeah. I mean, und after 9-11, we were united yeah. for five minutes here. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> so. need, we need more wars. That's what it is. We need more we need to, gigantic <laughs> we need terrorist to, attacks. We need yeah. to. We, we need to go to war with somebody big, you know, somebody who like could knock us out really, because that's Cold War days. We were kind of, yeah, know, well, yeah, don't joke. Like, that was okay. All North right. Korea, we should go to war with Iran. They're too tiny. I mean, it needs don't... to be like China. It needs to be like a threat, a true threat. Because I, do you think that we would lose to North Korea? Like, we're not going to lose to them. Well, they would just nuke us and that would be the end of it. So, yes. Mm. I mean, are, are, are nukes better than their nukes? It's well, like, it's we... whoever's first. Okay. All yeah, right. I don't, it doesn't really matter. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if, if you and I each had nukes, I feel like we have a sort of like, we have a mutually assured destruction mm. agreement between the two of us. Mm -hmm. Right. Definitely. Don't so. go too, too far. No. Or you take yeah. down the whole ship. Sure. Right. right. Um, what should we, should we promote anything? Uh, we're having like holiday sales and stuff. So go to a, a special place. Dot .substack com. Yeah, and do that. Yeah, we supposed and... to talk about colleges or some shit, and we didn't do it. Oh, whatever. They know what we. Th they they what know we what we say? would say. Nothing. Yeah. Claudine Gay uh, is, uh, you know, she. I don't think. I. I think she might survive. I mean, uh, hundred, three hundred at least professors have signed a letter um, defending her uh, against termination. Yeah, I guess it's up to the donors. It won't change a thing. Too. No. It, she goes. Doesn't matter. Um, I feel bad for her, actually. I mean, she's just she's a DEI hire all the way up the ladder, and it's she's been put in this position. I actually do feel bad for her. It's 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 the Abraham Kennedy situation, yeah. It's and systemic racism, not the kind that she thinks it is. If she goes, she will be a victim of systemic racism, of mm -hmm. a different sort. Yeah. Um, I think she it's, can't lose, but she also can't succeed. You she know can't what I mean? win. Like she can't do anything. No, I mean it's ex that's exploitive. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, somebody like her has been put in that position, not unlike her cousin, Roxane Gay, who has That's been elevated crazy in the literary world. Absolutely. It's crazy. Yeah. But then, like, how can she, like, harp on about, like, anything social justice related when she is, like, when, when this is the kind of prominence that their family has because achieved. she they still have to move through the world as women of color oh my god so that at the end of the day yeah hmm. um yeah anyway um so okay so founding members uh get to hang out with us periodically which is why people should become founding members and we might do those more frequently we're thinking yeah. of doing those more frequently because they're fun actually i like them yeah really fun it's easy i just drink the whole time yeah you get to yeah, See, everybody else is like being very sober. Ugh. Well, it's only like, like it's like <laughs> it's early for me. It's late yeah. for you. It's like I would still drink. Afternoon. I think it, yeah. <laughs> even if it was that early, I would be drinking. But yeah, okay. Um, um, you can watch me develop like whatever it is, like liver problems slowly. Um, oh, so, <laughs> that's how long we're going to be doing this. <laughs> we're going to be doing this until we both have cirrhosis. Yeah, yeah. That's how committed I am. All right. Okay, well, until next time.